Okay, here's the solution to quiz number six for ECE 320. Now the first problem, I've got this H bridge. It's been kind of messed up. H bridge, and I want to find the voltages and currents. The first thing I've got to figure out which transistors are on, which ones are saturated, which ones are off. So starting out, I've got for T2 across this diode, I've got zero volts and zero volts. There's no potential across that diode. T2 is off. On T3, I've got 10 volts to 10 volts. T3 is off. T1, I've got 10 minus 0.7, or 0.7 volts across this diode. Gives you 9.3 volts across 300K. That means that I1 is 31 microamps. That allows beta IB, that allows up to 3.72 milliamps to flow. I3 down here is 10 minus 0.7 over 400K. 23 microamps, that allows beta IB 4.6 milliamps to flow through here. Uh, and R limits the current. At best, this is 9.5 volts. This is 0.36 volts. Again, when you saturate, T4 is 0.36 volts, T1 is 0.5 volts. The remaining voltage across R is the limit of current from R for I2. So the most I2 can be is 6 milliamps. Now I've got a current limiter. The current is going to be the smallest of these three, the 3.72, 4.65, and 6 milliamps. Here's the winner. What that means is that this transistor right here, T1, IC is beta IB. This one's active. T4 is saturated. Saturated I like. When it's saturated, I know the voltage. The voltage drop across the transistor T4 is 0.36 volts when saturated, so that's V5. V4, I don't know what it is. In the active mode, V4 is somewhere between 0.5 or 0 and 9.5 volts. Uh, so I have to back into V4. I do know the current. Since T1 is active, I see is beta IB. And that means that I see is 3.72 milliamps. Let's do that one in red, the pink. So this current right here is 3.72 milliamps, controlled by T1. The voltage drop from I times R gives me this voltage. Under the right side is 0.36, add I times R, and get the voltage at V4, which for me was 5.99 volts. Again, your answers are going to change. Uh, the resistance depends upon your birth date, so each quiz is different. Um, for me, if my birth date was Mother's Day, 1514, you know, May 14th, that's what you get. Problem number two. Same idea, but if I reduce the base resistors to 10K, now find the voltages. Same procedure as before. Uh, this guy is turned off, T2. T3 is turned off. The current, I1, is 10 minus 0.7 over 10K, 930 microamps. I3, down here, is 10 minus 0.7 over 10K, 930 microamps. The current that they allow is beta IB. Beta is 120, so transistor 1 limits the current to 111 milliamps. Transistor 4, down here, limits the current uh, beta IB, 186 milliamps. And the resistor R limits the current by 10 minus 0.5 minus 0.36, the remaining voltage across R. That over 1514 ohms is 6 milliamps. So the current is the smallest of these three, and the winner is right here, 6 milliamps. So what that tells you is that the current flow is 6.037 milliamps. That says that T1 is saturated, T4 is saturated, and when they're saturated, the voltage across T1 is 0.5 volts, making this 9.5. V5 is 0.36, and the current is 6 milliamps. And the 6 milliamps is going to depend upon what you pick for R. But that's what you should get for problem number 2, something similar to that. Problem number 3. This is a DC to DC converter analysis. Find the voltage at V1 and V2, both DC and AC. 
Now for the DC voltage at V1, I've got 75% of the time it's at 20 volts, 25% of the time it's at minus 0.7. When the diode turns on right here, I get 0.7 volt drop, making V1 minus 0.7, making the average 14.83 volts. So this is the DC voltage, 14.83. By voltage division, capacitor doesn't matter DC, inductor doesn't matter DC. It's R over R plus 150 times 14.83, 13.49 volts. That's a DC. AC voltage. V1 goes from plus 20 to minus 0.7. The AC voltage then is 20.7 volts peak to peak at 1 kilohertz. Let's change the color to blue. At 1 kilohertz, the inductor is J omega L, J6280. The capacitor is 1 over J omega C, becomes minus J26 ohms. Resistor in parallel with capacitor. If my resistor is 1514 ohms, I get 0.4 minus J26 ohms. Voltage division now. I get this resistance, R1 over R1 plus R2. So it's going to be what I'm measuring right here, divided by the total times the input. Take the magnitude, I get 88 millivolts peak to peak. There is an angle that just says that V2 is out of phase from V1. I don't really care about the phase, I just care about the amplitude. So that's the signals V1 and V2. That's analysis. Problem four is design of a DC to DC converter. If I want V2 to be 12.5 volts with one volt peak to peak, this is the DC term, 12 volts. This is the AC term. Start with the DC term. At DC, if V2 is, I forgot. 12.5 volts. By voltage division, it's R over R plus 150 times V1. Solve for V1, and I get V1 is 13.783. I now want to pick the duty cycle to give you that voltage. And so the DC voltage, 13.783, is your duty cycle times 20. 1 minus the duty cycle times minus 0.7. Do some algebra. It's the desired voltage plus 0.7 over the input voltage plus 0.7, 69%. So 69% sets the DC voltage. To find the capacitor. Uh, what I like doing, a couple ways to do this. What I like doing is pretend, let's do this in red. Pretend the capacitor isn't there. Solve for the AC voltage at V2. It's going to be R over R at a kilohertz, this is J6280. R over R plus 150 plus J6280 times the AC voltage of V1, 20.7 volts peak to peak. And I get 4.83 volts peak to peak. I want the ripple to be one volt peak to peak, so I need to make the capacitor have an impedance that's that much less than the 1514 ohms. Should be about one fifth of that, 313 ohms. I know omega, 6280, solve for C. C is 508 nanofarads, or 0.5 microfarads. So that's problem four, design. Problem five, this is really a MATLAB problem. The trick is first input the signal X of T into MATLAB. And one way to do that is I'm going to have T go from zero to two pi. And this is periodic in two pi. X is the maximum of zero, three times sine of T plus four times cosine of T minus four should give you the waveform shown in that figure. Find the Fourier series approximation out of the second harmonic. Here, there's a couple ways to do it. Numericals will actually be a lot easier in MATLAB. The DC term is just the average. So there's your DC term. The first harmonic is twice the average of X hit with a complex exponential at the fundamental. Here, the period is two pi. I got T already going to two pi. So e to the minus j going between 2 pi. And this is the cosine term. Here's the minus sine term. The second harmonic, do the same thing, but hit it with twice the frequency. And I get the cosine term at two ratings per second, the sine term at two. For the third harmonic, which wasn't asked for, but I did it anyway, hit it at 
complex exponential at the third harmonic, I get the cosine term, sine term, put it all together, and here's the Fourier series approximation for x of t. Your dc term, the one rating per second, two ratings per second, three, uh, three wasn't asked for, but I did it anyway. Again, the real part is cosine minus j is sine. The last problem is given the Fourier transform, find y of t given x of t. This is a superposition problem. Treat it like three separate problems. Uh, first, at dc, uh, dc I'll do in blue. So at dc, uh, the input is just 10. That's this term right here. There's the dc term. The resistor is 1514. Again, that depends upon your birth date. 500 by voltage division is what you're measuring, divided by the total times 10, 7.5 volts. That's the output at DC. Next, at 20 ratings per second, uh, this one is red. At the 200 ratings per second term is this guy. The capacitor at 200 ratings per second and it's minus J500. In parallel with 1514 gives you 148 minus J450. Now use voltage division. It's what you're measuring, the 148 minus J450 over the total times the input. Again, real is cosine minus J is sine. This is sine of 6, 200T. Gives you the 0 minus J6. And here's your answer. Again, the real part's cosine minus J is sine. The next term at 400 ratings per second. That's this term right here. At 400 ratings per second, the capacitor becomes minus J250. R in parallel with C gives you 40 minus J243. Use voltage division. It's what you're measuring. Divided by the total times the input. Again, this is 7 cosine, 0 sine. Gives you this term. The total answer then is your DC plus the first harmonic. Real parts cosine minus J is sine plus the second harmonic. Real parts cosine minus J is sine. That's superposition. Once you have superposition and phasers, you really have Fourier transform. So that is quiz number six for ECE 320.